Hello friends, today we would be discussing about the thermodynamics of the isothermal process, the isobaric process. And in the last lecture, we have discussed about the assumptions for a thermodynamic process. The assumptions are that the basically the we are considering this. We consider we assume So the assumptions are that the thermodynamic processes are reversible processes. Actually, in practical in practical case, they we know that they are not reversible. But this is assumed, this is considered so that the derivations or whatever we are going, the discussions for the thermodynamic process would become easy for your standard. Then it is a quasi-static process. The change in the system is infinite simul slow. The system undergoes infinite simul change at every stage except the adiabatic process. The system is in thermodynamic equilibrium during all the change. The system which we are considering in our discussion is a cylinder and the cylinder is fitted with a movable, massless, frictionless piston and an ideal gas is filled inside the cylinder. The ideal gas equation is applicable to the system. So, so with, with the help of these assumptions, we are going to discuss the first thermodynamic process that is the isothermal process. We are going to discuss today about the isothermal process. Now, isothermal. Thermal meaning temperature. Iso meaning constant. So, the temperature remains constant. The temperature of the system remains constant. That is, the change in temperature is zero. So, delta T is equal to zero. The isothermal process is a constant temperature process. The temperature remaining constant, the other state variables like the pressure, like the volume change, but at constant temperature. So, such a process is called as isothermal process. The example of isothermal process is melting of ice. Now we know that the ice melts but the temperature, the room temperature is same. So at constant temperature the ice is melting. So this melting of ice is a isothermal process. Now we would be discussing about the thermodynamics of the isothermal process. Now. <coughs> We are considering a cylinder and it is having a piston which is movable, massless, frictionless piston and the gas inside the cylinder is the ideal gas and the initial pressure and volume of the gas is Pi and Vi and the system moves to Pf and Vf. Pf is the final pressure of the system and Vf is the final volume of the system. Now we know that since Temperature is equal to constant. There is no change in that, that is delta T is equal to zero. No change in temperature. Hence, we can apply Boyle's law. Boyle's law is applied. Now, we know that is Pi Vi is equal to Pf Vf since T is equal to constant. The work done in an infinite simul that is very very small infinite simul isothermal expansion Isothermal expansion is, we know W is equal to PdV. This is the work done. Now, the total work done for increasing the volume from Vi to Vf. Therefore, total 
work done is equal to W is equal to integral of VI to VF PDV. This is DW. DW is equal to PDV. So the total work done is equal to W is equal to VI to VF PDV. Let this be equation 1. Now we know for ideal gas, we know according to ideal gas equation. We know that PV is equal to NRT. That is P is the pressure, V is the volume, N is the number of moles, R is the universal gas constant and T is the temperature. So, we can write P as NRT upon V. So, let this be equation number 2. Now, work done to increase the volume of the gas from VI to VF is integral of PDV. Now, why have we taken this integral of PDV is again a question. We know that work done is equal to PDV, DW is equal to PDV. Now, why I have taken this DW and this PDV? This is the, DW is the work done, which is at constant pressure. When the pressure is constant, pressure remaining constant and the volume is increased by DV. So, P into DV is the amount of work done to increase the volume of the gas through dv at constant pressure but in case now here this is the pv diagram for the isothermal process that is when the temperature remaining constant on the y axis is the pressure and on the x axis is the volume now we have seen here that the system moves from a to b the pressure goes on decreasing, the volume goes on increasing. Now, the pressure is not remaining constant. Hence, we have to add for the constant, this formula is for a constant pressure. The work done, but pressure should be constant. But we know here, the pressure is changing at every instant. So, we are considering here that instant for which the pressure is same. So, we will say DW1. So, DW1 for, the, for which the pressure is constant at this point. Then again the pressure is changing when the system is changing to some other state. So, plus DW2 where the pressure remaining constant. So, DW2 will be here. DW2 is the pressure the pressure at that particular very very small instant of time should be constant is considered here. So now dW1 plus dW2 plus dW3 so very we have to go on adding dWn. So instead of all this adding we are integrating. So we are using the mathematics for adding all this work done at the for increasing the volume but at constant pressure. We know that the pressure is not remaining same. The volume is increasing by at, at varying pressures but according to our formula we are using a very small part where the pressure remains constant, very small increase in volume, where the pressure is remaining constant and that is, the, that is the work done to increase that particular volume. Then when again the pressure changes, but the pressure, when again the pressure changes, again we are discussing about the work done for that, for that particular increased pressure or decreased pressure, which is constant. So in this way, all these dW are those for which the pressure at that particular instant of time is constant. And hence, instead of adding, we, we are using the, the mathematics that is the integration. So, we are integrating here W is equal to integral of. Now, we have increased the volume from Vi to Vf. Hence, 
we take integral of PDV and we will be using the laws of integration for solving the work or finding the work done. So, W is equal to integral of VI to VF. Now, we know that according to the ideal gas equation, PV is equal to NRT. So, from here we can write P is equal to NRT upon V and this P I can put up in this equation 1. So, I write here NRT upon V into dV. Now, N. N is the number of moles. Now, when a system of gas is fixed, the number of moles of the gas are also fixed. So, they are also constant for that particular system. So, N with the number of moles is constant. R which is the universal gas constant, it is always a constant quantity. And now here since this, it is an isothermal process, that is the temperature remaining constant. Hence here this T, the temperature is also remaining constant. Hence N, R and T can be taken outside the integration. So, we get W is equal to N R T, we take the integral sign V i to V f, this will be d v upon v. Now, according to the laws of the mathematics or the laws of integration, we would be solving this. So, w is equal to n r t, the integration of d v upon v is l n v, extend the limits are Vi to Vf. Now, what is ln V? You must have studied in the initial standards or you must have studied the logarithms. Now, the log table which you have at, at your home or which, which you have, the log table which you have with you, that log table has the base 10 or we can say here, log log table or the log book which you have at your home it is of base 10 so log of 10 to the base 10 is equal to 1 these are the common logarithms which are used to solve the multiplication the very very difficult multiplications or divisions now there are one more type of logarithms that is natural logarithms and that is to the base e so log of 10 to the base E that is equal to which is also written as ln 10 this is equal to now here this this log of 10 to the base E the meaning is the same this is log of 10 to the base E this is equal to 2.303 so these are the natural logarithms the base is E so here we are writing here the similar natural logarithms. The base here is E and the log of V to the base E. So, according to what in the book it is written, I have written in the same way. It is, we have to write ln and here V. But actually it is log of V to the base E. The common logarithm that is log of some quantity to the base 10 can be converted into the natural logarithms that is log of some quantity to the base E by multiplying a factor of 2.303. So now here the integration of dv upon v is log of v to the base E. V, uh, the limits of the integration are vi to vf. So we get here w is equal to NRT, NRT, LN, VF upon VI. So, this is the expression for the work done by the gas in an isothermal process. So, let this be equation 3. Now, we are discussing the thermodynamics of the isothermal process. Hence, in this isothermal process, we know that temperature is equal to constant. Therefore, the change in temperature is equal to zero. And we know that the internal energy of the system depends upon the temperature. 
the in, uh, if the temperature increases the internal energy also increases if the temperature decreases the internal energy of also decreases so since change in temperature is zero the internal energy is also constant or the change in internal energy is equal to zero now according to the first law of thermodynamics we have q is equal to delta u plus w now here since delta u is equal to 0 so q is equal to w that is q is equal to n r t n r t log v f upon v i so the heat transferred to the gas to change its state from v p i v i to p f from p i v i to p f v f is completely converted into the work because the change in the internal energy is zero because the change in the temperature is zero when the gas absorbs heat piston is pushed upwards the volume of the gas increases the gas does positive work there is no change in the internal energy of the gas whatever heat was absorbed by the gas it is used to do the work and there is no change in temperature or the internal energy of the gas and if the piston is pushed downwards the volume of the gas decreases negative work is done by the gas but there is no change in internal energy because the process is isothermal process and the heat is released to the environment. So such is the isothermal process. So the isothermal change is a very slow change. The system exchanges heat with the surrounding and the system is also always in thermal equilibrium or and thermodynamic equilibrium with the surrounding throughout the change. And here we know that delta T is equal to 0. Hence delta U is equal to 0. But W the work done is not 0. And the heat which is given or released is also not equal to 0. So such is an isothermal change. So this is the PV diagram for the isothermal process on the y-axis we are considering the pressure and on the x-axis we are considering the volume so the if the initial state of the gas is a which is pi vi now the gas gas absorbs heat and it expands because the temperature is constant all the heat which is absorbed is used not for increasing the internal energy but for doing the work that is increasing the volume of the gas and hence the system moves from point A to point B. So at point A the pressure Pi and the volume Vi and at point B the pressure is Pf that is the final pressure and the final volume. So the pressure volume increases the pressure decreases, the heat is absorbed by the gas from the surrounding and when if it is moving from point B to point A but at constant temperature that is the volume is decreasing, the pressure is increasing then the heat is released to the surrounding and the, the system moves from point B to the point A. So this is about the thermodynamics of the isothermal process. Thank you.